This is the brand new M5 MacBook Pro, and I just wanted to know how good it is at editing videos with Final Cut Pro. I'm just curious because when I got the first base model M3 MacBook Pro, that thing had major issues with Final Cut Pro, including complete inability to export videos. So in this video, I just wanna go through an entire editing process on this machine to see how it performs and see if it might make sense for you if you're interested in video editing on this device. So just to give you an idea of what we're working with here, for a video that I just recorded, I have an A roll and a B roll shot, top down shot, and I have a separate audio track. I've created a multi-cam clip with all of these in here. So you can see I have four actual tracks. I have two of the A roll, just one of them is zoomed in. I have a B roll track, and then I have the separate audio track. The video that I shoot is with the Sony a7 IV. I actually have three of these cameras. They are running at 24 frames per second, HEVC 10 bit 4K, and I think they're around 80 megabits per second each. I also shoot in log, so I have three color effects applied. One is just basic brightness and some saturation. The second one is to actually remove some redness from my skin. And the third one is the Leaming LUT to convert from log into Rec. 709. That means every single frame of each of the video tracks all has to do the work in the background to be able to show me the finished product. So what I have here is my main project file and all I've done so far is drag the multicam clip into the timeline here so that I can start my basic editing and go through the A roll and cut all the silences and the dead spots out. But if you wanna get an idea of the performance, like look at this, there's no stuttering at all. This thing will play instantly without any lag or delay I can scrub and move all the way around and this thing is performing just, just fine. I mean, just as you would need it to perform to do some video editing. So I'm gonna start by just finding the beginning of my video and going through it and then, you know, just cutting where I need to cut and change the frame. So I'm also going to be switching between multicam so I can switch to a jump cut. I can switch to uh, the other angle right there. So the top down angle and I can switch back and forth as I need to. So now I'm just gonna go kind of start to finish and cut up my A-roll and I'll let you know if I run into any issues along the way. If we go ahead and bring up Activity Monitor, we can kind of see what the memory's doing at the moment to get an idea. Again, this is the 24 gigabit version or gigabyte version uh, upgraded from the 16 gigabyte version. So right now we're only using 12, which is not too bad. Uh, so yeah, so far it's going pretty smoothly. Now I'm in a point with this edit where I have this space here where I had to do a software update on the fly during the video. So I want to leave it in the video, but I don't want it to be 10 minutes long. I want to compress it down to just a few seconds. So I'm going to select the portion of the video that I want and cut it. And then I'm basically going to set this to a custom uh, timing. And I'm just gonna drag it to where I want it, to where it's only gonna be a few seconds long. And then what's gonna happen is to play this, it's gonna have to go through all these frames that were super sped up. So I can try and play it without doing any rendering, and let's see how that goes. And it looks like it's playing just fine, no issues there. But I can also actually just go ahead and render that out so that it'll play super smooth next time. As soon as it's done, it's thinking about it. Come on, why are you paused? There you go. So now it should be rendered and should be extremely smooth to fly through that five or so seconds. I should probably mention that I'm not using the internal storage for editing this video only because I don't have enough space in here. It's a 512 gig SSD and this video is gonna be about 200 gigabytes. So I'm actually using this external OWC Express 1M2. This is the 80 gigabit version. So like Thunderbolt 5 speeds, even though this computer is only Thunderbolt 4, this has been an awesome enclosure. I put a Western Digital, Western Digital black drive inside and it has been just stupid fast. I have a whole video about this setup if you're interested in that, but I just wanted to point out that I'm not using the internal storage. All right, here's another example of a clip I had to shorten and speed up. You can see that I actually increased it 4,919%. So you would think that that would be a pretty big burden on the system, but it is playing through it just fine. And of course it looks more like a time-lapse because of the speed of which it's going, which is fine. That's what I'm looking for in this clip but it's pretty impressive that there's no issues, no dropouts, no lags, like it just works. Again, this was a pretty simple edit, not a lot of B-roll clips sitting on top, not a whole bunch of effects or audio or anything else like that, but still, the fact that it can do 4K, HEVC video, 10-bit, log with grading and some other color effects all in real time with multiple clips is pretty darn impressive. 
And just a final look at the memory, we're getting up to almost 16 gigabytes of memory used during this video edit, which again, is pretty darn good. And you should have no issue even with the 16 gigabyte version of this laptop for at least these types of edits and these types of video files that I am using. All right, I just wanted to bring up another example video real quick. This one is a little bit different, has a lot more B-roll. It's also a multicam video, which has multiple uh, 4K streams inside of it, all color graded the same way, but it does also have multiple uh, B-roll angles on top of it and, and multiple clips. So you can see that the performance, even with a video that's a little bit more advanced than the other one we were working on, still just plays completely fine. It's very fluid. There's no delays, like everything just, well, my plugins aren't working for some stupid reason, but that's a whole nother issue. But other than that, everything is just very fluid. Like this, this is definitely a video editing machine. So next I wanna make sure that the video actually exports with this base model M5 since I had issues with the base model M3. I doubt I'll have the same issues, but we have a approximately 15 minute video here. We're going to export as, let's see, it's gonna be HEVC 10 bit 4K. And I got my iPhone ready to start with the timer. Gonna tap on here and then we're gonna choose a name and we're gonna click save and start the timer and see how long this 15 minute video takes to export. And there we go. Five minutes and 36 seconds to export this 15 minute video using the base model M5 MacBook Pro with 24 gigabytes of memory. Is that as fast as my M4 Max MacBook Pro? No, it is not. But what this does show is how capable this machine actually is. Sure, it could be faster, but it is more than fast enough for everything that I actually need to do. And I really don't need to be spending money on the Pro or Max machines, even though I probably still will because I'm an idiot. So that is how the base model M5 MacBook Pro with 24 gigs of memory actually performs with Final Cut Pro. It is more than fast enough for most video editing that probably most of you are going to be looking at doing. This is a extremely capable machine and I can definitely recommend it. You should definitely check it out if you're in the market for a video editing laptop for YouTube or whatever else. But what questions do you guys have about the M5 MacBook Pro with Final Cut Pro? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you liked this video, you're probably gonna like this video right over here. It's a good one. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.